Hello, hello, and welcome to part 15 of our Go language tutorial series. In this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is using the mapping system that we just learned in the previous tutorial and applying that to our news aggregator application. So at this point, I'm going back to the code for that news aggregator app that we left off on. Basically, we were to the point where uh, we, we, we visited the, the, the sitemap that contains a bunch of sitemaps. We've pulled those locations to all the other sitemaps. And now we're parsing all those sitemaps, basically. And, uh, well, at least we're just grabbing that information, basically, and, and throwing it into N, basically, and parsing out the, the titles, keywords, and locations. But at that point, what we probably like to do is store that in some sort of map that we can then iterate through or, and basically pass so so that we could just pass just that map over and iterate over that. Now, it could be the case that actually you could just pass um, the, the news struct uh, and then try to iterate over that as well. I just think probably putting it into a map makes a little bit more sense. Also, if you were going to probably convert it to a JSON or something like that, it would make more sense that way as well. But in theory, you, you could leave the new struct and then iterate over that um, as well. But that's not what we're gonna do. We're gonna throw it into map of keys and values and all that. I think it'll be a little cleaner and easier for us, I think, to iterate over when we do pass it to our web app. So first of all, uh, what we're gonna go ahead and do is since we, we talked about in the previous tutorial, you're not gonna be able to make a map to multiple values. You could only map you know, to, to a single type value. Uh, so if you wanted to have multiple values, what you can do is create a struct, create your own type. So that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to just do a type, um, and we're going to call this news map. It's going to be a struct. And this type will just contain keyword, which will be a string. And then it's going to contain uh, location, which will also be a string. Uh, keyword should be plural because it's going to be, but we've got enough keywords. I mean, we, we could do it. I don't think you'd wind up in trouble. Um, I'm just going to leave it that way for now. Anyway, uh, you might be thinking, oh, but Harrison, titles. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the, the, the key of the map, the title, and then uh, keyword and location will be our values. So that's going to be our news map. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is come down into our main loop here, and then we're just going to add a new uh, variable here, which will be uh, the, the news map itself. So we're just going to say news map colon equals, and then that's going to be make, make what? We're going to make a map. And that'll be a map where the key is a string and the values are news map values. So then what we're going to do is we, we can, um, we've, we've unmarshaled this data to, uh, to our news type here. So we know we have all that information and we, we can iterate over that information. So, and then as we iterate over that information, we can store it uh, into our map. So that's what we're going to do now. So basically we're just going to start a new for loop. So for, and then it'll be uh, the value basically, and then, uh, or for the index rather, and then, uh, or actually probably what we want to do, sorry, uh, probably what we want to do instead is for the index, and then we don't actually care about the value here. We're going to say colon equals range, um, and then we're just going to do end dot keywords. And so this is going to be kind of a hacky way to do this. There's there's probably a better way to do it. Maybe some sort of like range and a length of something, something like that. But this should work as well. So, cause we're just gonna grab the, the, the values and keywords. So maybe it would be even better to grab like rather than keywords do like n dot um, titles might be like, that might be more efficient than, than iterating over them. I don't know. I actually don't know if that'll change anything. But anyways. All we really want to get is an index value. Like that's what I'm after. So then what we're going to say is, uh, oops, treating that like a Python. Anyway, I was like, why didn't it indent for me? So now what we're going to say is news underscore map because for this value variable that we just defined up here. So news map, um, and then the title will just be n, oops, n dot titles, which is that, that, uh, slice of titles. So then to get a specific element, we can grab it with the index of that element. So we can just say IDX. So news map, whatever title equals the news map type that we just kind of, that we just created basically. Um, 
And in there, what we're going to say is n dot, and then we'll do uh, keywords, keywords. I th let me make sure. Yeah, so keyword came first and then location. So n dot keywords um, idx, and then n dot capital locations um, idx. Cool. And then now what we could do is iterate over um, iterate over the the uh, the things inside of our map. Like so, basically, once we've gone through all the locations, like basically up to this point, we should have now news map, which contains all the data we're interested in. This should contain the uh, the titles, right? The keywords to our articles and the locations of all the articles. So if we wanted. Um, what, we're, what we're more interested in doing is displaying this on our web app, but if we wanted to iterate over this, we could do something like for IDX data um, colon e whoops, colon, why does that keep happening? <laughs> colon equals, I must be hitting the backspace key at the same time. Uh, range news map. Let's go ahead and format dot print line. Um, and then let's just add some um, new lines here. Let's do three, um, and then the index, and then let's go ahead and format dot print line, and then I'm just going to do two more. So index should be the title, right? And then we want to see the keywords. So let's just do a keyword, or I'm sorry, what we need to do is data dot keyword, and then data dot uh, location. Okay, let's save that and let's run that. Make sure we didn't screw anything up because we probably did. Yeah. Index out of range. Um, boy, would I like a better error than that. It doesn't even give me a line number. Oh, it does here, 38. Okay. So here, so keywords, index. Um, let's try, why would, and uh, titles, let's try keywords here. Let me rerun that real quick, see if we run on that same issue. Somewhere, uh, yeah, so it's definitely something to do with our keywords, like it's not getting populated. So for range n dot keyword n is our news. Okay, so our issue here is likely this capital K. That's going to be my guess. So I'm going to switch that to lowercase k because I don't think it was a capital K. Uh, hopefully that's our only issue. Let's see what happens. Okay, yeah, so that was our issue. Um, so the reason why, first of all, it was like, so when we passed n dot, so we sh should be able to change this back to titles and that should work. Um, basically titles was getting populated, but keywords wasn't because it was looking for a capital K tag and it wasn't finding it. So it was populating titles and locations, but not keywords. But then what we were trying to do was reference that specific index for a capital K keywords tag, not the variable that we're using here. Um, and it was like, oh, we don't have that. So that's why that was throwing that error that was relatively unhelpful. Anyway, um, did I change back to title? Titles. Let's try that one more time. And then if that works, we'll be off to, uh, yeah, okay, cool. Okay, so now that we have all this information, what we're gonna be doing now is going back to our web application information, basically, and part of the tutorial, because now we're getting close to being able to like, hey, let's actually put this up on our on our web app. So uh, we're gonna be focusing back on learning a little bit more about web applications in Go. So if you have any more questions, uh, or if you've got comments, tutorials, tutorials, if you have any tutorials, let us know. Anyway, questions, comments, leave them below. <laughs> Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.